Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the shop. We're going to move on to the next video in the CNC build that I'm currently working through. Um, I'm still super excited because every time I do one of these videos, it means that I'm progressing on the machine itself. Today I want to talk about one of the coolest parts of the design and, and really what I think is what made it all kind of gel for me and, and make me move forward, and that was the linear rails. Um, you remember that in some of my guiding principles, uh, inexpensive was important, uh, dirt tolerant was important, and both of those things were integral to how I did the linear rails. I also foreshadowed in one of the intros I shot, I don't know if it made it into the video, uh, that I think this is a design that is very similar to how a lot of the production machines are made, but I can only say think because, well, I've never seen one, I've never dissected one, but I've caught little glimpses which, at a minimum, have catalyzed this idea in my head. So, uh, let me show you what I got. Um, move the camera here a minute, and I'll show you the prototype. So, this is the prototype of the linear rail. The linear rails are going to be made out of 2x2 two two inch box tubing. Uh, this isn't seamless or anything like this, it's just 2x2 two two box tubing. And a piece of 1 8 by, I believe that's 3, yep, 1 8 by 3 hot roll flat stock for the rail itself. Now, lots of things come to mind, so I'll just start wherever I am. The truly important part of this, as far as alignment and, and any level of precision goes, is the top of this piece of flat stock. Um, the reality is, the way the rest of the design goes, the bottom of the flat stock could actually be, be wavy and, and not affect anything. The tubing, the important direction on the tubing is that down its length, if you sighted down it, we didn't have a curve here. We want to keep this as flat as possible. So one of the ways that I'm going to achieve that is by bolting this on. At least initially, it's going to be bolted on periodically, drilled and tapped into the wall of the tubing. And you can see this isn't very thick tubing. I think it's, uh, I don't think it's eighth inch. Yeah, it's eighth inch wall tubing. So this is started out to be a prototype carriage, um, but it turned into actually being the uh, x-axis carriage. And riding on this flat stock are V-bearings. The two bearings at the top are in line and are in solid, non-adjustable. There's no eccentrics or anything like that. The bottom, however, are on what I've been referring to as control horns. And, and I think that comes from the fact that uh, that's what they looked like when uh, I was building model airplanes. They allow you to turn in different directions. And these, although I currently have just held together with rubber bands, the end goal will be to have a spring between them like this. The more tension on the spring, the harder these control horns will, will push up on the bearings, making contact at the bottom. And it's this flexibility that is, to me, the most important part of this design from the standpoint of, I've watched a lot of others. I've seen others make uh, similar V-groove bearing kinds of deals where the distance between these two bearings is set and rigid and unforgiving, and so any deviation in the width of the two rails or their alignment means you get a loose spot. Well, in this case, you never get a loose spot. As long as the top is flat and smooth, these two bearings are what you're, you're rolling off of, you're indicating off of, and these down here basically just hold it on. So let's put it on real quick, and I don't know the best way to do this. I'm gonna set the, the top bearings in the on the piece of flat stock, and then let's see if I can do this on camera. This ought to be rich. The mount that this camera is on won't allow me to make it any lower, so we'll just hold it up. Underneath, on these two control horns, if I open them up, see the bearings will go onto the bottom. 
and then the tension in here is what holds them tight and it won't come off now. These are V-groove bearings. And I looked at using U-groove bearings, but the uh, U-shape was, was way too large and sloppy. And this truly only gives you two points of contact on the actual piece of flat stock. I chose to use hot roll. And hot roll stock has usually got mill scale on it and it's a little nasty and doesn't look as pretty, but it's always got a little radius on it to ease that point of contact into the side of the bearing. So I chose to go uh, with hot roll and it's also less expensive. These control horns that I'm calling them, and I think I had another name for them, are held onto the plate with a shoulder bolt here, and that's what it pivots off of. And it's just a piece of uh, quarter inch aluminum with three holes drilled in it. This is where it pivots, here in the middle. The little one here is just for a screw that the spring, or in this case, the rubber bands are held onto. And then this larger one over here is for a second shoulder bolt that the bearing, that the bearing rides on here. A completed version looks like this. Now, my shoulder bolts are a little long, so I ground them off at the back. And unfortunately, I don't have any videos, I don't believe. If I do, well, it's playing in the corner and I'm a liar. Um, these are not hard to build. They're very simple. In fact, these were all done by hand in the drill press, nothing fancy. I started by printing out uh, a one-to-one a one -one scale um, version of the plan, um, and I'll put this on my website. And I glued it onto a piece of masonite and drilled three holes. Now these holes are all the same size and I used them to transfer the holes onto the blanks of aluminum. And once I had prick points at each position then I could drill the appropriate size hole for whatever I was doing. You'll notice this thing is it looks kind of cartoonish. It's, it's, they're in a straight side on it but it doesn't matter. Um, the dimensions between here and here and here and here don't matter. This is one of those things where uh, the lack of precision necessary to function appropriately uh, is kind of a benefit to this design. I spent a little time cleaning up this edge. Um, I used just a fine tooth uh, bastard file uh, to take out some of the nicks and dings and I also uh, sanded it a little bit and that has got this thing running very smooth. You can still hear if I shut up, you can still hear some little nicks but again keep in mind they aren't going to matter and even with if you just use NEMA 23's uh, there isn't enough here to bother it. That little knocking you hear, uh, I can hear it obviously. I can't feel it in my finger up here, which tells me it's in these two down below. These two down here, being the ones that are, are held together under tension, uh, are absorbing that. I don't, apparently my, my cleanup job up here was enough that uh, it didn't matter. So there's the, there's the linear rail design that I'm gonna go with. And uh, like I said, this is actually my x-axis carriage now. So let's move on to actually making the uh, two of these for the y-axis. Here's the stock I'm going to use. It's two pieces of two inch tubing and two pieces of eighth inch hot roll flat stock. I'm going to set one of these out of each out of the way for a minute. Okay. 
What I have to do is bolt these two together thusly. And the idea being that it's somewhere in the middle uh, with an equal distance. It's kind of hard to hold all these up and point at the camera. Equal distance, something eh, along that line. But here's the deal. It isn't critical. Um, one of the things that I learned One of the things that I learned building the CNC router was that uh, if you can't make it precise, make it adjustable. And, and I'm paraphrasing someone else who articulated that a lot better than I've been able to do in the past. So in this particular case, to start with, I, I want them to be as close as possible, at least on one side, to each other, because these are left and right. But, you know, if this was way down, you know, if it was all goofed up and, and way down here, just barely sticking over, it wouldn't matter. And maybe there's a reason why you'd want to mod this design and do it that way. In my case, what we're going to do, we're going to utilize the table saw fence and a block of wood cut that should be, that I can lay in here and the fence on here. And with them all laid out, they should be, uh, it should be as even as possible. If it's off by a little, it doesn't matter because I'm going to do both rails with the same spacer block in the same manner. Then I'm going to mark one left and one right and which side's the top. And that's really all that's going to matter. We're going to poke some small holes in here going down the edge and I'll lay them out. We'll do a nice neat job. But we're going to poke some small holes through both pieces at the same time. Then separate the pieces and drill the actual holes. The holes in the tubing will be the right size for the tapped bolt I'm using. And this is, and here's where Preston learned last time, the holes in this piece of flat stock are going to be oversized, which will allow me to adjust a little bit if necessary. Why would I need to adjust? Well, I'll need to adjust because if when I go and drill the final holes, one moves. And the other reason why I might want to adjust is to fine tune the height between the left and the right if necessary. I don't think it's going to be critical. Remember, plasma machines have that magic Z-axis height control. This isn't a router, it isn't a mill. So lots of advantages in the Z-axis height control and we're going to take advantage of it. So let's uh, drill some holes and put this together. There they are, everybody. Thanks for stopping by the shop. Uh, next time, yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do next time. Uh, some part. If it warm up a little bit outside, I'd weld together the frame. Maybe we'll do that tomorrow. Oh, wait, that's already done in video land. <laughs>